Microsoft's feature management library for .NET provides a lot more than just simple on-off toggles. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into the feature management that we looked at previously. Yeah, and just a quick recap, we'll link to the previous episode, but uh, we had this feature called Recent Posts, which we can turn on off here through our confi JSON config file by just setting this to either true or false. And if it's true, when we run it, uh, we see the recent posts on the main page. Ta-da! There's our posts. And if I set that to false, they turn off. But there's this concept within the Microsoft.Feature Management Library called filters and they're they're in there but they're not turned on by default you have to kind of register them or add them so what you can do is say add feature filter and there's some built-in ones so there's a time window filter which we'll try first which allows us to turn a feature on just for a specified specific period of time so the way we do that is uh, the configuration is a little bit different. I'm just going to copy and paste this because I had a block of it previously defined. But what you do is you say when you want that feature enabled. Um, so beyond just true or false, we say we want it enabled for, and then you pass in an array of filters. So we're going to use the time window filter here and specify a time frame. I'll hopefully be able to demonstrate this. Um, so today is May 8th that we're recording. And if we go from 17, 22 UTC time to 17, I'm gonna try for 22 and 30 seconds. So when I so run this is the part where I tell you a long rambling story which delays everything, right? <laughs> yeah. It makes me have to start over with my yep. 30 second time frame. So I'm hoping when I run this that I got the UTC time right here. And initially, yeah, so initially here this is not enabled, but now it just toggled over because it's now 22 oh something UTC time. So we're going to wait 30 seconds and so that's going to disappear. 30 seconds, this should disappear. So this wonderful feature is available for exactly 30 seconds. And if you happen to come to the site in that time frame, it will be enabled. So one of the things to, that's important to note about uh, feature toggles is that there are certain types of things that can be toggled. And oh, so there it goes. My system is off by 30 seconds from whatever that little website thing was, but three seconds. But yeah, now it's off again. See so what we're saying? It's off. Um, yeah, just the, the, the kinds of things. Uh, for example, if you do a database migration, if you're doing something at a, a da data layer, it becomes a little bit more synonymous with, say, a hairstyle. Um, just like I can't turn on and off um, a mohawk like Simon, um, <laughs> Uh, you know, there, there's been a, a change there, an underlying change that prevents that toggle from going. So you did, there are some limitations there, but I was I was just trying to fill the 30 seconds and now I've gone way longer, so. Mm -hmm. Just stretching out the video. So <laughs> a use case for this kind of time window one, we talked about some funny ones last time, but uh, you see a lot of websites where there's like a chat that's available but mm. only during business hours when people are actually at work, right? So that's a feature that you could turn on and off based on the time of day, for example. So that's just an example of uh, one of the filters that's built in. Another interesting one that you could use for like AB type testing is a percentage filter. So with this one, the, the value that you specify um, and you can enable more than one of these, so I could, I could have left the time window one enabled here as well. And you just kind of tag them all on there. Uh, but the configuration for the percentage one is a little bit easier, so if we go back to our... So here it's just going to be percentage. And then the parameters for this is just a value, which is the percentage of how 
many of the, how often we want it to be enabled basically. So we could say we want 50% of the requests to have this feature enabled. And if I run this now, sometimes I should see my, uh, my recent posts feature and sometimes I shouldn't. So here it's not there. And oh, now it blew up. So that's interesting and brings up kind of an interesting scenario. Uh, I'm gonna refresh it again. Okay, so this time it worked. So sometimes it works, sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off, and sometimes it crashes. And the reason it's crashing is that with that percentage filter, what happens is every time you ask the feature manager if the feature is enabled, it basically tosses a coin and says, it returns 50-50 whether it's enabled or not. Uh, which doesn't really work uh, when we have, we're calling it here in the, using the feature tag helper. We're calling it in the razor page, but then we're also calling it in the page model. In code, we call feature manager dot is enabled. So what's happening when it crashes is uh, here we get is enabled is false, and then we don't set the recent posts. And then over in the UI, uh, we call it again and it says it is enabled and now it tries to access recent posts and it crashes. So that hmm. kind of sucks. But uh, this is something they thought about with the design of the library. So uh, feature manager, just the, the basic one, uh, every time you call is enabled async, it will evaluate the criteria to decide whether or not it should be enabled. But there are certain types of feature toggles or. Uh, in this case with the percentage one where, or this feature in particular, where we should tr try to, we want the same result anytime we ask if it's enabled for the lifetime of a particular request. It doesn't make sense for the feature to be enabled for half of the request and not enabled for the other half. Um, so what they have is something called a feature manager snapshot, which is just another implementation of iFeatureManager that basically just has a, a cache in it that's uh, scoped to the request. So now with the feature manager snapshot, anytime I ask if the feature is enabled, it's going to give me the same result for the lifetime of that request. And um, this, as I said, it implements the say it implements i feature manager, so we don't have to change any of our code. We just have to pass in i feature manager snapshot. And Are there any registration changes in startup, or does it just part of the library when you part add of, feature management? Yeah, it's part of add feature management. So there's no changes in startup. You just have to make sure if this is a feature where you need to be getting the same results for the con lifetime of the request, then use I feature manager snapshot. And as it turns out, the uh, this feature manager or the feature tag helper here, if you look at it internally, it is using iFeatureManager snapshot, if you look at the implementation of it. Right on. So I, I, um, I'll go ahead. I can refresh this now, and it won't crash, and I get kind of what we expected, would have expected the first time. That's it. What were you saying, James? Um, I was just going to say, like, an, uh, an important thing to do in A-B testing, which is obviously a whole other um, topic but this this does light up the the path for you to do some important things like um, inside of that uh, the code on the razor page to include a snippet of um, of script or some kind of um, to register some kind of um, instance or usage be it through Google Analytics or app site app insights or whatever the case may be so you can actually follow through and start to check things like conversion rates and and whatnot yeah. and putting that inside of the feature toggle will give you good insight as to how well group A performs against group B so there's a bunch of other things that we want to talk about we'll do that in the next episode on feature management, but we talked about kind of these basic feature filters, the time window, the percentage one, uh, but there is, I'm scrolling, 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 this is a big page. There's this concept <laughs> of targeting that we'll talk about next time that allows you to do things like uh, staged rollouts to different groups of people. And this gets really interesting uh, where you can have, you know, your internal users, for example, might get a feature 
a week ahead of time before it gets rolled out to your external users. <laughs> um, so that that part's really interesting to me. So I'm looking forward to diving into that. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us on another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and uh, feature toggle your sharing on. And we'll see everybody next week. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thanks, Simon. <laughs>